Sterling Turner and we are at Sandy Woods. We're gonna find out all about this place, the acreage, they got all sorts of stuff going on. Let's find out. Hi. Hi, come on in. Welcome to Sandy Woods. Hi, great, thank you. Hi, I'd like to welcome you to Sandy Woods. My name is Russ Smith. I'm the program coordinator and also a resident here. This is your house right here. It is. This is really kind of cool. Yeah. And this is like the maintenance building where you guys have like the tractor or whatever you guys need. To yep, yep. We have a maintenance man who lives here in the village and that's where the tractors and snow blowers and whatnot are kept. Very cool. Um, and this rock that's behind me, what's the story of this rock? That rock, uh, there were a whole bunch just like it. When they built Sandy Woods, um, they had an unpleasant discovery, which is that there were a tremendous number of rocks and boulders and they ended up bringing in giant stone-crushing machinery to take care of it all. And as a souvenir, they left that one because the alternative was to blow it up and it was too expensive to do that. Right. And how many acres are we sitting on here? Uh, altogether, we've got about 120 acres that make up the farm. Um, what we're looking at here is the village itself, mm -hmm. uh, which is made up of about 35 buildings. Everything you see in the village used to be woods. Uh, until June of 2009 when they broke ground and they cleared all the woods. Uh, we did that intentionally so that we could preserve the farmland for future use. And the village is made up of uh, 16 three-bedroom homes, uh, 24 two-bedroom, and 10 one-bedroom, and they're all rented. Wow, they're all rented. Yep. And then somebody's house is way over here? Yeah, up beyond the village, uh, the other part of Sandy Woods is house lots. We have 22 house lots for sale. Um, a local broker, the Canaan Group, is marketing the lots, and people will be able to purchase those sites and build their own homes. The one building you see there is a land trust house, which is a unique concept. Um, it's becoming more and more popular. It's an affordable way to become a homeowner. Uh, the individual pays to have the house constructed, but then rents the land on a long-term 99-year lease. Very cool, very cool. We'll have to go take a look at that later. Sure, be happy to. And I understand you have an orchard here, you all planted an orchard? We do. Uh, the community was uh, built between June of 2009 and the fall of 2010. Uh, around August of 2010, the families moved in, and shortly thereafter, we won an orchard from the Fruit Tree Planting Foundation. They invited nonprofits to apply and we were one of 20 groups around the country selected, uh, 50 fruit trees. It's a mix of Asian pear, two varieties of apple, cherry, and peach. Uh, it, they're almost a year old. It was September 25th of last year that we uh, planted the trees. And they're doing great. And if all goes well, in a couple years, we'll be able to start harvesting. Awesome, awesome. Any other gardening areas around? or? Yeah, we have 10 acres of farmland that's available to us, and we've only just started to scratch the surface. Uh, we got grants from the U.S. Department of Agriculture to build some high tunnel houses, which allow you to extend the growing season almost year-round. Uh, we also obtained a grant for a new farm well, which we'll be drilling. In the meantime, while we wait for those 10 acres to be uh, farmed, we have a half-acre community garden. Uh, we started it last year, 
and it doubled in size. This year we have about 45 gardeners, and it's a mix of both families who live at Sandy Woods and families from the greater community, so it's a nice way for us to get to know our neighbors. Right, and to stay part of the community. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So, how many house lots still for sale over here? Uh, 22 for sale. 22 for sale. Yep. Which is good, because you can't find a place to build in Rhode Island. There aren't that many left. You know? That's right. It's a small state. That's right. And the, the folks who buy those lots and build their own homes will be uh, a full participant in the community. So when Sandy Woods is fully developed, we'll have 50 families renting their cottages, 22 families owning their homes, and Joe Bossom and Mika Sega, the original farm owners, still live here as well. And that'll make up the complete community. So 76 uh, families in all. Very cool. Well, let's, let's move around and go see some more stuff, shall we? Sounds good to me. Why don't we go and, and check out the orchard first? That sounds great. It's a beautiful day. They're right up this way. Okay, great. Uh, this way is one we can take. So apparently this is what this used to look like here. Um, but a little thicker, I think. Right? That's right. Yeah, everything you see in the village was actually treed. And in order to preserve the hay fields for agricultural use, the woods were cleared to create a uh, space for the village. And the village itself was uh, designed to be clustered for two reasons, partly to preserve as much of the land as possible. And we also wanted to encourage people to engage with their neighbors, right. which is why you see so many porches and the buildings so close together. Oh, it's all that with the breeze, the fresh air, it's wonderful. Come on out to Sandy with y'all. Come on out, come on out, <laughs> come on down. We welcome visitors. Acorn. Yeah. Sandy Woods Acorn. Hey Russ, I can see yeah. your house from here. Yes, you can. <laughs> I can see almost all the houses from here. Yeah, this is one of the nicest uh, views of the village. We're high up above it and you can really catch almost every, every building. It's a beautiful sight. And you can feel the breeze coming. We're almost, uh, we're almost at the highest point in Tiverton. Um, just up above us is the, the highest spot. So you usually get a good breeze here, even in the summer. And so 50 trees in here? 50 trees. This is our new orchard. Um, uh, we uh, won the contest with the Fruit Tree Planting Foundation. It was just a year ago. Uh, they sent out an arborist uh, on staff. He spent about four or five days with us. He uh, lived with uh, one of the families in the village and helped us select the trees. We went with uh, disease-resistant varieties. We're hoping to keep our spraying down to as little as possible. And we have Honeycrisp and Liberty Apples. We've got two different varieties of Asian pear, a uh, couple of peach trees, and five tart cherry trees for cooking. And uh, they're just a year old, and so far so good. We're taking good care of them. Yep, a couple of years to get some fruit. Yep, that's the plan. And we do have some ducks in the orchard. Um, uh, kind of a funny story, they just sort of found us. There's four Pekin ducks, the white ducks. Uh, they're all males, and where they were, they were fighting with each other over the females in the flock. So we agreed to take them, and now they're perfectly content living in the orchard with each other. And then we have a fifth duck as well, who was an orphan that we adopted. So they live up here in the orchard and um, seem to enjoy themselves. I only count four ducks for us. Uh, the fifth duck flies. Oh. The four white ducks don't, but the fifth duck comes and goes. Okay. You'll see him circling overhead, and then he comes in for a landing. I got you. So we may catch him later. Maybe he'll come in for uh, a little water or something. Yep. <laughs> Could be. And so um, what's this other building over here, this white building, little dome-like thing I see? Yeah, that's one of our um, space pods. Uh, the steel yard up in Providence built these space pods for an art fair. And when the festival was over, they donated them to community gardens. And we took a couple. We've got one still to put up. But that's where we store our tools for the garden, which is just to the uh, north of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of an, uh, an all-purpose storage space. But we call it the space pod because that's pretty much what it looks like. That's what I used to call my Honda CRX. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a beautiful spot. Yeah. I'm looking up for the duck. Yeah. But I don't see it. No, he's probably off uh, exploring. Yeah. I may go feed the white ducks while we're up here. Okay, so 
tell me more about Sandy Woods. All right, so you've got this community here, all these houses, and but not everybody's an artist. That's right. Um, it's it's a mixed community. Um, basically, it all started when Joe and Mika wanted to sell their farm, and uh, that's Joe Bossom and Mika Seeger, who still live here. And they connected with an affordable housing developer in Newport, Church Community Housing. And it took a, a lot of time and effort, but eventually uh, a financing package was put together and the village was created. <clears throat> and in 2010, uh, families moved in. I would say between half and two thirds are either artists, musicians, writers, or people interested in agriculture. We also have families who grew up in Tiverton and couldn't afford to stay. Mm -hmm. uh, and now they have an opportunity to come back to raise their children. And we have some people who just wanted their children to grow up in an artistic environment surrounded by nature. Uh, it's a great place for kids. Um, about half of the folks who live here are children. And we have the recreation area and the new skate park uh, at the bottom of the village. Uh, the new library will be going in next door to us. We have hiking trails, we've got open fields. Um, it's just a wonderful, safe place to raise a family. And the artists and the uh, other creative people who live here keep things interesting. We offer arts and crafts to the children who live here. So even if their parents aren't necessarily actively engaged in making art, the children have an opportunity to take classes without leaving the Sandy Woods. Uh, I should also mention that a lot of what we have going on is available to the greater community. We have weekly concerts um, in the Sandywood Center for the Arts, which is our flagship building. Right. Uh, we have a monthly contra dance. Uh, people can join the community garden without living at Sandywoods. Um, all of these activities, yoga, Zumba classes, um, are available to folks who live anywhere in the area. Mm -hmm. Do you hear that, people? Zumba! Zumba. Here at Sandy Woods. Wednesday mornings, 8.30 to 9.30. Well, I Zumba came class. to Contra Dancing last Wednesday. You did. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's on I, the... Uh, uh, I waltzed. That's on the... <laughs> Badly. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's on the third Wednesday of every month from 7 to 10. The concerts tend to be on Saturdays, but we do have some on Fridays as well. And that's been a wonderful thing. It's mm -hmm. really taken off. We started in April after we got our entertainment license, but uh, it's really uh, become extremely popular. Um... I love it because it's a chance to support the local musicians, but we've also gotten to the point now where national touring performers are coming in. Uh, November 8th, we have John McCutcheon uh, who'll be with us. Um, uh, he's a very well-known folk singer. Uh, later in December, we have Paul Jeremiah, one of the best blues people out there. Uh, one of our own residents, Bonnie Strickman, will be performing with a jazz trio on December 8th. And then I've already booked, I think, 30... Uh, acts for next year, awesome, including April Virch, the Canadian Fiddler, Battlefield Band from Scotland. So lots of wonderful music coming in. Wow. Some great stuff. Yep. Yeah, we have a lot going on. All sorts of stuff happening here at Sandy Woods. Come on down. <laughs> Check it out. Meet Russ. Yeah. See the artists. Absolutely. We'd love buy to have a, you. Buy a piece of land, build a house. Yep. <laughs> can I mention an email? If people email? You can give people email. Of course you can. Yeah. Yeah, if people email info at sandywoodsfarm.org, they can schedule a tour or ask more questions, or we'll be happy to uh, give you a, a guided tour anytime. Yep, the 411, the whole rundown. That's right. So we're standing here in this meadow that overlooks part of the village, and I understand that this meadow is actually uh, the leaching field for the village? That's right. Yeah, we have one leach field that serves the entire village, and although we can't build on it, what we can do is use it for agricultural activities, haying, and in this case, uh, we started the beginnings of a wildflower meadow. The orchard is just above us, and we wanted to have pollinator habitat uh, to encourage bees, and again, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, in awarding us grants, um, included one to create pollinator habitat. So we planted a variety of uh, wildflowers. We've got black-eyed Susan, we've got bachelor buttons, and uh, a few <clears> others. And hopefully in the years to come, it'll get even more and more established. It's nice. I'm standing here. I see Cosmos. And um, this field goes on for a couple hundred yards until uh, you get to one of the auxiliary parking lots for the events. And uh, Orchard is up 
over here. And um, we're gonna go, we're on our way there. We just stopped here momentarily. <laughs> just like the bees. Just like the bees, which there are lots of pollinators around right now. Sandy Woods, and uh, I uh, do a variety of things. Um, I guess I'm best known for watercolor and uh, calligraphy. Those are two of my skills. Um, I have some some of my uh, paintings are on display in the uh, uh, large entertainment building here at, at Sandy Woods. Um, what can I say? Oh, I also uh, have taught uh, calligraphy and watercolor basics at uh, the Newport Art Museum. And I expect to be doing some teaching here at Sandy Woods, too. Um, I, uh, what can I say? <coughs> um, I learned a great deal from my parents. My mother was a children's book illustrator. My father was an architect, and uh, they would go out and do uh, watercolor painting whenever they got an opportunity to do that. And uh, so I, uh, uh, that was an early introduction for me in, into the art world. Um, I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, New York. A school very similar to the Rhode Island School of Design, uh, where I uh, majored in illustration. Uh, I also have had a little business called Ahimsa Graphics, which uh, uh, I have been very much influenced by the teaching of Gandhi and others who have taught nonviolence. And uh, so the word Ahimsa means. Uh, uh, nonviolence also, and uh, I chose that as the name for my company. Uh, I had many designs that I had done in, in note cards and uh, t-shirts and uh, tote bags and that kind of thing, and was selling them all over the country. there is an art group that uh, meets and we draw the figure and uh, I've been enjoying uh, joining that group and uh, doing some figure drawing. Um, I had never spent so much time drawing the figure before so I, uh, uh, it's sort of a new experience, a new learning experience for me and uh, that's been one of the things that I have uh, particularly enjoyed in recent months. Mm -hmm. Well, this is, uh, I think you can see that it's uh, a, 
a boat that's been turned upside down to leave probably for the winter. Um, uh, the location was in Adamsville, uh, Rhode Island actually. Um, I often have taken pictures of things that I uh, thought would make nice paintings and then I uh, um, have something, some reference to work for. I don't have to sit out in the sun or... or uh, uh, I have to be careful though because I, I don't like painting to look too photographic. So I uh, try as much as I can to um, use techniques and, and uh, use an approach that uh, uses the subject that I've taken a picture of as, as reference and not as uh, something that I'm actually going to try to reproduce exactly.
Moroccan uh, of an Ala Prima oil portrait. I paint in oils primarily. And this is um, got quite a ways to go. This was about 30 minutes into the process. Usually need at least an hour and a half to two hours to complete a portrait. Um, but I've been doing this for about 10 years now. And um, I use a very simple palette for oil colors, uh, very minimal medium, um, mineral spirits, a little bit of walnut oil, and that's pretty much it. Occasionally I'll make a, a medium or two. Anyway, so um, that's pretty much it for a start. If you want to look at some of my other work, it's at cyberfineart.org, and I am offering uh, some classes this fall here at Sandy Woods on Saturday mornings for drawing, Wednesday evenings for painting, and you can find out more at my website, cyberfineart.org and sandywoodsfarm.org. The Arts and Cultural Alliance of Newport County promotes and advances arts and culture for the benefit of our community. We provide valuable networking opportunities for those seeking to be involved in the arts. The Alliance draws its strength from the talent, energy, and passion of its members. For more information, including membership benefits, events, and more, visit www.newportarts.org. To contact or request a spotlight on ArtView, please email acaartview at gmail.com. For more episodes of ArtView, visit our YouTube page at youtube.com slash user slash acanewport.